Hey everyone, this is Spike Legacy, and welcome back to my channel. If you watched my earlier video on the Warhammer 2C Bludgeon, you should have gotten the idea that this free hero variant isn't a very good showcase of what the chassis can actually do. So in this video, I want to talk about the Warhammer 2C's full potential and use two builds to demonstrate what the chassis changes in the clan arsenal. Again, I want to thank the subscriber who donated this mech pack, which made this review possible. As I mentioned earlier, the Bludgeon is held back by the lack of hardpoints. It's more accurate to say that it's not the number of hardpoints that hurt the variant, but both the number and placement of the hardpoints that prevent the variant from performing well. Because of the position of the torso mounted weapons, you want as many of those as you can get. The best Warhammer builds both on the clan and IS side puts weapons on the torsos exclusively. The arm mounts are low and the arm hitboxes are big, making them great shields, but not a good place to put weapons. On the offensive side, weapons that are placed closer to the cockpit makes convergence very good and requires only a small amount of open space between obstacles to fire off. Neither are these weapons too low, meaning you have to expose less of your mech when you need to shoot over terrain. This is kind of important since the Warhammer 2C has the second to worst mobility stats among all mechs weighing between 80 to 85 tons, so it's slower to get back to cover with all else being equal. Most of the best performing Warhammer builds on both the IS and Clan sides share this characteristic. For example, the Warhammer 6R, Black Widow, and 6D for IS. One reason why the Warhammer 4L never made a big impact on the game, even with ECM, is its poor weapon placements. For the 2Cs, this is mostly true, with some exceptions. So if the Bludgeon's two arm-mounted energy hardpoints were torso-mounted instead, it would have made a big difference. My overall impression of the Warhammer 2 Cs is that while it's not really a game-breaking chassis, it does things differently enough and well enough such that it becomes a viable alternative to some of the top mechs in the game right now. We'll take a look at a couple of examples. The first variant we're going to look at is the base variant. With 7 energy hardpoints, we've got plenty of options. A standard laser vomit is an option, but I don't see any reason to run this over the Hellbringer or Ebon Jaguar, which is a lot more agile and have better mounts. An MPL or LPL pulse laser boat is doable as well, but I feel that the Marauder 2C's two additional energy hardpoints give it more punch. The build that stands out for me is his quad ERPBC setup. Thus far, the Warhawk Prime has been the king of clan ERPBC, but this build challenges its position, mainly by bringing the ERPBCs up to a better position. These PBCs are able to clear obstacles more easily, and the trajectory is easier to predict. Because we're not putting anything on the arms, shooting and twisting is a legitimate defensive tactic, whereas the Warhawk's side torsos take most of the return fire. It loses heat gen and velocity, but overall this feels better to me than the Warhawk because I can connect more shots with it over the course of the game. I feel like this is the first quad ERPPC build that I'm comfortable with in the solo queue. Normally I don't like the relatively low DPS of the ERPPCs, and it still hurts the Warhammer in fast games but it does well enough in between the long and short games to make me recommend it on the average. For the solo queue skill tree, we're going to get nodes that increase DPS, accuracy, and some defensive nodes. If it was for FP, I'd get the advanced zoom node and max out range nodes, as I showed in my bludgeon video. The story of the ERPPC Gauss build on the Mall Hero is similar. We've seen this build before on the Mad Cat Mark II, Highlander 2C, Scorch, KDK3, and other clan assaults. However, this is the first time we've seen the weapons placed in such a compact way that they can be shot through small gaps in the terrain or in between your teammates, and be high up enough to clear obstacles with relative ease. Once again, you've got the arms to shield you from return fire, which is another advantage that a lot of these other mechs I mentioned earlier don't have. This would be a very strong build back when Gauss ERPPCs were not heat linked, but it's still a good build now. In fact, the disadvantages of heat linked Gauss ERPPCs make me not run that combo most of the time. In between is relatively low DPS and the need to lead the target potentially twice. But the placement of these weapons are so good that it makes it worth running in the case of the Maul. For the Maul skill tree, we once again prioritize DPS and defensive nodes. Alright, let's see these mechs in action. In this match we're on Frozen City Incursion, and uh, Frozen City does help with DPS quite a bit as with all energy focused builds, but uh, it doesn't allow you to use range very much because a lot of times, just like with Skirmish, the battle happens on one side of the map, so uh, you don't really get to have a, a drawn out you know, trades across the entire map sort of thing that you would sometimes see on Assault. So uh, 
we're going to have to deal with, uh, you know, decreased relative DPS versus some other builds that we could have taken. But it's still going to be okay uh, because we're, as I said, helped by uh, the, the cold ambient temperature. One of the things that um, I started doing uh, recently for ERPPC builds is to have override on because ERPPCs just generate so much heat that it's hard to predict sometimes uh, when you're going to hit that limit. So by hitting override, um, you know you're giving you're giving yourself some wiggle room to exceed the heat threshold a little bit and not shut down because you know. Yeah, it's, you're probably going to take more damage being shut down than, you know, if you went to like 105% heat, for example. But of course, uh, be very careful when, you're ha when you have override on, uh, because if you accidentally trigger ghost heat, then you're going to kill yourself very easily, uh, especially with two ghost, heat, ghost heated PPCs. Uh, it's going to be really bad for you. So we, we, what I want to do here is really to position myself a little bit further back from the, uh, you know, the main blob, which is mainly over to my right side. Um, I don't really want to get into a DPS battle with people because I'm going to lose those kinds of battles. What I really want to do is to stay off on the side just a little bit, uh, be able to escape towards my team if necessary, use my team as a a barrier um, so that I don't get pushed on uh, and just try to you know try to do much as much damage as I possibly can over time and not just all together You should be able to see from um, several examples in this case where I did exceed uh, the override limit and that has helped me not shut down and keep myself alive um, in, in this case. Pretty close match thus far. Twisted the wrong way, I should have twisted the other way, but... Missed an easy shot there on that fire starter. I dropped my strike there, it didn't do any... Well, because I killed that Warhammer, it didn't do anything. And now we just gotta kill the last guy. So now we have one guy left to kill. I'm healthy enough so that I'm not really worried about this Vulcan taking out four of our guys. Um, and he is partially, he's almost legged on, you know, he's almost legged, so I'm really not too worried here. He does uh, end up killing one more of our friendlies. I just need to find him. Try to figure out which way he's going, and uh, there he's uh, he's dead now. And just have to touch the base, and that is match. Overall, that wasn't a bad match. In this match, we're on Polar Highlands domination. Uh, Polar Highlands can sometimes be a ranged map. Um, but domination tends to bring both teams very close together towards one central point, central point, which you know everybody NASCARs around in the solo queue, so it ends up being a very uh, DPS heavy. So let's see how this build actually can perform when, uh, in this scenario, when 
you know, there's a lot of uh, close, more closer range combat uh, happening and where DPS is uh, a big factor. So of course we want to be in a situation where we can play range, but this is, you know, you can't really control that in solo. So as expected, you know, the team is NASCARing, enemy team is. Um, this Warhammer is almost dead from the back shots. I'm surprised that last one didn't kill it. I must have hit like a, a rear side torso or something. Enemy UAV, India 8. I missed a couple of easy shots there for some reason. I don't know what's happening with my eyes, but <laughs> so uh, that. Injured Warhammer is uh, getting isolated by my team now. And he went down from a back shot. One more shot in that timber. CT. Shadowcast can be a little bit tricky to hit. They're kind of like boxy, so they don't have a lot of surface area, and they move pretty fast. They also have mask, which can allow them to change speeds, so they're a little bit tricky. I, I try not to prioritize them if possible, but sometimes that's the only thing you can shoot at. I got some help from friendly light there. We're just getting ignored. We're getting like back shots and side shots uh, at this angle. Almost took out that blackjack uh, with the rear with these rear shots. Blackjack should be one more shot. And once again, you'll see that my override is engaged. This is um, something that I'm trying out uh, with ERPPC builds now. Like most other Polar Highlands domination games, it's a short match and we didn't do a whole lot of damage. But the damage I did was pretty efficient. A lot of back CT shots that took out guys pretty quickly. The Warhammer 2C pack is a recommend for me overall. Right now, with so many mechs in the game, it's hard to differentiate mechs with one another, but the Warhammer 2C manages to do just that. I hope you guys liked the video, and make sure to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you next time.